All right, good morning. Welcome to day two of January. Let's let's do it. Let's get going. You can do a little good, good little warm up. Uh, make sure you have your cooler or bench or box or something to stand on for today. And uh, yeah, we'll use it. Well, we're gonna start with the foam roller. You don't need it, but um, if you have it, we're gonna do this thread the needle. Um, if you don't have it, just stick your arm under your body without the foam roller. But if you have it, come on down onto all fours, palm faces up, and you're going to roll the foam roller away from you as you dip down. Ooh, and get into shoulder and maybe a little bit into the upper back on the side of that arm that's underneath your body and then roll it back up. So we always, prior to a workout, we always wanna do what we call dynamic stretching, where you're holding the movement for no longer than five seconds. It's so really two, two to five seconds is kind of the gold standard. Um, and then after a workout or later in the day is when you can do what we call static stretching, which is holding a pose for upwards of 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, go ahead, get that foam roller on the other side. So thread, thread the other needle, other side of your body. Um, and there's been a lot of research done on these two different types of stretching and how the static stretching short, short term temporarily will actually weaken your muscles. Uh, so you don't want to do it before a workout and the dynamic stretching works more to activate, loosen up, like wake up your muscles. So that's why you want to do it before a workout. And it's funny, it's my friend in college who was super unflexible. She was always like, I'm pretty sure stretching is not good for you. And that was back in the day when we would like get in a circle and like do the movement. Everyone would count, like you'd count for 10 seconds. So that was like the worst. Okay, let's come into a pigeon, but again, we're gonna hold this for three to five seconds. So getting into the glutes, holding for about three, two, one, and then we're gonna switch. Good morning, Andy. Welcome back. We're gonna do three of these on each side. Two, one. And if this doesn't work for you, you could be on your back in a figure four with ankle over knee pulling in the ankle and the leg towards your chest. Getting into those glutes. We've got a gluteolicious, gluteolicious workout today. That sounds like uh, ice cream flavor. I'll have the gluteolicious with the side of hamstring. Oh, okay, that sounds pretty gross. All right, one more. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna move into a down dog, but with your feet wide. So get those feet nice and wide, find your heels on the floor, and then slowly push up, getting into the hamstrings, uh, and shift side to side. Um, so a lot of people struggle with the windmills, right? And I. You know, if you've been doing this program a lot, you've done a lot of windmills uh, because they're a really, really valuable movement, both in terms of coordination, anti-rotational strength, and also mobility. And a big limiter for a lot of folks are the adductors, these muscles on the inside of our thighs. There's 80. So since I told you, you need your cooler or bench or box, we're gonna do this quick, Copenhagen plank to wake up those adductors. So go ahead, stick your, think about getting into a side plank. Top leg is gonna go on the floor and then you're gonna lift yourself up and we're gonna hold this for about 15 seconds. And you should feel this in those adductors and then your obliques are gonna come on board to assist. Okay, we're gonna hold for five, four, Three, two, one. Good morning, Amy. 
Welcome. And then we're going to do the other side. And if you feel any pain in your knee here, you can give yourself some additional support with your bottom leg or move your foot further in on the cooler. Okay, I'm going to have my back to you. But we're going to lift up and we're going to hold. So if this is too hard, just give yourself some support with that bottom leg. Otherwise, try to hold it. We're going to go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, adductors. So I find that to be rather uncomfortable. Um, and what's happening there is you're getting in touch with a muscle group that tends to be pretty turned off. Okay. Sweatshirt removal time. So we're going to move into our lateral step ups. So find your, your bench box or whatever and get one foot on the top. If you've got the Yeti, remember these guys are tippy. So get your foot in the middle. And then I want you to try to line up your toes so they're in a straight line. And then shift your weight onto that top foot and then stand up and come back down and check that alignment. Okay, because our tendency is always to step forwards because it's easier. So I want you moving laterally side to side. So weight starts here, shift here and up and down. So we're doing this five times. Shift up, back down. And check the toe alignment each time. Good. And then we're switching sides. Shift up and down. Good, Melissa. Mag, you're frozen. Okay, and today, Lily's got to have a push-up day. So today is push-up day. Um, so we're going to warm up our scaps on um, the cooler. So hands on the cooler. So remember, scapula, those are our shoulder blades. So keep those arms straight and drop the chest down by pressing the shoulder blades together and then shoulder blades press apart. Keep that core nice and tight. We're just doing five here. Good. Okay. And then grab a long band. And if you don't have a long band, I want you to just interlace your fingers and do this stretch here. But I think most of you have a long band. So we're going to do seated banded row. I got myself some new bands for Christmas. Sit up nice and tall. And then again, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So we're really waking up the shoulders. We're going to do eight of these guys. Keep that chest lifted. Awesome. All right. And then we're going into our last warm up move, which are jumping jacks with a floor touch. So the way this works is it's a jumping jack. So a jumping jack and then squat down the top of the floor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, and we are starting out with 30. So if you're just coming back in, jumping jack, and I, I emphasize the clap overhead because it works to warm up the shoulders. So tap, that's one. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do 30. I'm gonna turn up the music a little bit. We'll go all together in three, two, one. Here we go. One, three, and you can go as fast as you want or as slow as you want, within reason. And we're at 10. OK, 
And 20, we got 10 more. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. Whew, finish it up. We got a couple more. All right. Good morning, um, Kristen. Welcome. Eighty. Welcome, Meg Barton. Welcome back. I think you froze. Froze for a minute. Okay. We're gonna do that whole thing one more time. So let's get that cooler set up for our lateral step ups. So if you're just coming back, foot is in the center of the cooler, toes are lined up, shift the weight on the cooler, stand up, shift the weight back down, make sure the toes are lined up. Toe in the line. Five per side. So we're really trying to shift the weight onto the cooler. And that's going to recruit good old side butt <laughs> more than your quad and toes of the foot that's on the floor. All right, so then we're going into our cooler scap push-ups. So hands on the cooler, feet are out, core is super tight, arms are straight. Shoulders are pressing together and apart. This is a part of our body we tend to be very disconnected with. And once we tap into our scapula, our back, it's like, oh, there's a lot of range of motion there, ready to unlock. It's like the ultimate unlocking of your potential, tapping into the back. All right, then grab that band, loop it underneath the feet, hands go through the band, sit up nice and tall, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then arms come to straight. Eight reps here, and if you don't have the band, you can do a few more of those scat push-ups and then interlace those fingers behind your back to keep stretching, keep stretching back. Good, okay, and then we're going to our jumping jacks with the floor touch, 20 reps. 20 reps this time, but let's try to move a little bit faster. So we'll start in three, two, one, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, four more, 17, 18, 19, 20. Don't tell me you want to get back in the bed at this point in the day because you know, you're over it. You're like, let's do this. All right, so we're going to move into our first strength set, which are one of my favorites. Reverse lunge to a step up. We are doing eight reps on each leg. Um, do all of them on one leg, then the other. Then you're going straight into maximum push ups. So, whenever I say max reps of anything, it's always assumed that you're stopping one to two reps before your form is going to crack. Now, with the push ups, I know push-ups are really, really hard for people, myself included. So if you want to start on your knees, this could be like a, a good progression that I would use with a lot of my clients. Start on your knees and do, do five or six, and then come up to the cooler and do five or six. Or start on your feet and do the same thing. Maybe do you know five or six on your feet and then go to the cooler and do five or six of there, okay? Keep an eye on the timer. I want you to stop with at least 30 seconds before the end. And we're playing around with a new timer. 
So we are going to have two and a half minutes to do eight reverse lunge to step ups and then your max push ups. And then you have the remainder of that two and a half uh, minutes to rest. Okay. We're doing it three times. So I think this will make sense once we start, which is right now. Okay. No time like the present. Here we go. So reverse lunge to step up. And here we go. Eight reps per side. And your knee can come to the floor or not. Make sure the knee is tracking over the toes. And remember, we're doing this three times. So pay attention to how you feel. If you're feeling super strong, that means it's a good indicator to add weight next round. And if this is like, Oh my goodness, just stick with your body for this movement. And once you've done eight on both sides, you're moving into your max push ups. And we have a minute and 15 seconds left. Oh my goodness. Hey, nice work, you guys. So we've got 35 seconds, and then we are doing this again. So for round two, if you want to add weight, you may, you don't, you absolutely do not need to, but we are going in 10 seconds for round two. I'm just going to go with one weight. All right. We're going in three, two, one. Here we go. Eight reverse lunge, two step ups. And once you've done eight, switch your legs. Work with your breath, focus on your body. This is the ultimate time to get out of our heads and into our bodies. Nice work, you guys. We've got 40 seconds left in round two. And then we're going into round three. 
So think about if you want to add weight or stick with what you've been doing. I'm thinking. <laughs> Okay, my friends, round three in 10 seconds. Eight reps per leg. Going in three, two, one, here we go. Nice job, you guys. Okay, we got 15 seconds left. Nice job, Andy. Good, 80. Good, Chesua. Okay, you guys. Um, awesome job. All the high fives. Round two of strength. Similar format. Where we have two and a half minutes for two different movements. So these movements are the single leg hip thrust on the cooler. You're definitely gonna want a pad or some torn up seat cushions or something for these. So let's practice this, everybody. Everybody will gather. Okay, so mid back goes right on the edge of the cooler. So basically where your sports bra would be. Now, your feet are gonna start hip distance apart, but bring, just pick a foot and bring it a little bit more centered between your hips. And then the other foot is just hanging out because Mr. Planted Foot is doing all the work. And you're hinging down, squeezing that glute as you come up. Let's just do five on each side just to feel it out. Chin is tucked, elbows are free. Okay, um, as you come up, your shin should be at a 90 degree angle to the floor. You should feel this most in your glute and your quad, okay? If it, you're feeling it in your hamstring, your foot's probably either too far away or too close in, most likely too far away. Okay, so we're gonna do eight of those on each side, and then we're going into our single arm row on the cooler, right? So we always have some sort of a row. So I want wrist, elbow, shoulder in a straight line. Take this leg, get it out. Give yourself a really stable, platform. I don't want it this foot right next to the cooler, okay? 
get it out there. And then remember last week we were like kicking that elbow out. Today we're just driving the elbow straight up, but we're pausing at the top, feeling really strong, and then lowering back down. So shoulder blades are squeezing together and coming back down. And we're doing eight to 12 on each side. Okay. We're just having fun. All right, so let's see. We will huh, cool. Okay. Um, we'll just do this one. All right. What the frick? Sorry, I'm having timer issues. There we go. Perfect. Okay. We are going to start in 10 seconds, single leg hip thrusts on the cooler, doing eight per side. Um, I highly recommend starting with body weight here. All right, let's do it. So I like to exhale as you bring the hips up. And then the other thing I want you to think about is if you're like you're on a bike and when your hips come up, you're pushing the pedal down with your foot. And this allows us to start activating our glutes more when we're riding our bike. All right, once you've done eight, switch sides. So hips are coming up, but it's through driving the foot down and engaging the glutes. So eight on each side, really working good mind muscle connection with that booty. And then moving into that single arm row, giving yourself a super stable base, pausing at the top, finding the back, right? That's kind of the theme for the day is what's going on at our backside that we can't see we tend to be disconnected from, and shoulders start to round forwards. So eight to 12, pause at the top, feel your strength, squeeze those shoulder blades together. Switch when you're ready. Remember to pause at the top and squeeze. All right, and then we've got a short rest. 30 seconds, perfect, before going into round two. Round two for our single leg hip thrusts. We're gonna add a little pause. By little, I mean one crazy cantaloupe. Okay, so you're gonna be here, you're gonna come up, pause, one crazy cantaloupe, and down. And this is gonna, this is gonna give you time to really connect with the booty. Okay, we're going in three, two, one, here we go. So you can add weight here, but, I would rather you develop a really good connection with your butt um, before you add weight. So get that pause in at the top. Oh yeah. Often we can intensify an exercise just by bringing greater awareness and thought to the muscles that we're supposed to be contracting in that exercise. And this is why, actually one of the reasons I love this class is because you can't talk to anybody. And some of my clients, I love, like, I love personal training. I love the conversations I have, but it's a, always a struggle because I, I don't want them talking while they're doing the movements, which is what I'm doing right now, right? But, but this is for you. This isn't for me. <laughs> um, 
but it's like, you should be just a hundred percent focused on you, right? This is your time. You have blocked this off for your physical health, but we know that as your physical health improves, your mental health improves. And just the practice of you prioritizing you, which is what you're doing right now, is creating healthy habits. So all of that is to say, connect with your body. Tap into your feelings. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. And when you're done, give yourself a little rest. Nice job. And then we're going to round three soon. 10 seconds. All right, more mind muscle connection practice. Here we go, you guys. Eight reps again with the pause. Let's start all together. In three, two, one. So down, up, pause, and come back down. Pause for two, three, four. Picture yourself climbing up five. Some big ass hill. Six, seven, eight, and then switch your feet. And here we go for one, two, three, four. Make sure your hips are staying square. Five, six, totally trying to support your head with your hands. Seven, eight, nice work. Okay, final round of our rows, give yourself that wide coffee table base. That's a, <laughs> it's a mountain bike analogy a lot of coaches use in terms of being stable. Like what's more stable, a lamb, like a tall thin lamb or a low coffee table. And the idea is on the bike to be stable, you wanna get low like the coffee table and not be like, <laughs> Okay, you should be on your final side of the dumbbell row, feeling those shoulders. Obliques should be turning on a little bit to support. You might feel your biceps a little bit. That's all great. But I really want you thinking about those shoulders squeezing together. And when you're done, take it down. Have a little bit of a rest here in the transition. And I'm gonna get rid of this timer, which I'm just gonna get rid of that guy altogether. That doesn't work very well. You're all like, yeah, we can't see anything. Um, okay. Nice work. So we have a 12 minute imam that we're gonna go into next, which has four moves. So let me take you through those moves and then we will start. Um, all right. So rear, well, you probably don't need to rearrange your cooler, but more overhead pressing. When I say more, it's like, we did this. Did some of this last week. So you're gonna sit on the cooler, okay? Chest is up and we're going as many reps as you can on one arm. And again, whenever I say as many reps as you can, stop being two to three reps before your form is falling apart. So as many reps as you can on one side, then as many as you can 
on the other. That's the first move. Then going into dumbbell reverse sit-ups. I'm sorry, dumbbell sit-ups. So Monday we do the reverse where we're coming down as slowly as we can. Here we're coming down and shooting up. Um, and we're trying to get 15 reps. So down up with speed, 15 reps in um, on the first minute and then 13 and then 11. And then <laughs> we move into our row press, which I think you guys were all here last month. One of my favorite new moves. So we're in this high plank. We're grabbing the dumbbell, flipping onto our side, pressing that weight up, bringing it down, switching the weight to the other side. Okay, I want you to think of that as play because you might fall over. It's very hard, but it's also very fun. We're going for five on each side in that minute. And then we move into up downs. Again, some of you should be familiar with, but if you're not, you start to stand, hands come to the floor, kick those feet out, brace the core, jump or step back up and stand up. And that is one rep. Okay, so we're gonna have double timer action going. Um, we'll have a 12 minute countdown and my timer. So we're gonna go in 10 seconds, starting with the single arm dumbbell press on the cooler. And here we go. So pressing up. Stopping when you feel like you could not do any more with good form. But I also want you to keep an eye on the timer and give yourself at least 10 seconds of rest before we move into the dumbbell sit-ups. So a lot to think about. Okay, my friends, dumbbell sit-ups. In 10 seconds, we're shooting for 15 reps here. Lifting that chest, go to three, Two, one, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Try to keep hips and shoulders in a straight line so there's no curving of the spine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, and a little bit longer rest, which is nice. Then we go into our row rest. So high plank. Remember, you're grabbing that dumbbell, get it up to the shoulder, press it up and away. Feet here are not stacked. So stagger your feet for a nice stable base. Here we go, shooting for five per side, but keep an eye on that timer and stop with at least 10 seconds before we finish. Laugh at yourself if you mess up. There's a no judgment zone. You're not judging yourself if you can't do this. My job is to challenge you. Your job is to accept that challenge without judgment. All right, 10 more seconds of work, and then I want you to stop. Okay, you are resting, and then we're going into 11 up downs. 11 up downs in three. Two, one, here we go, Hannah. Here we go, Kristen. Good, 80. Good, Cheswa. Here it is, Melissa. Good, Matt.
Good, Lisa. And once you've done 11, it is rest time. Okay, and that's our imam. We're doing that two more times. So single arm press, here we go here. Start on the, a different arm than you started on last time. Go in in three, two, one, here we go. Make sure that arm is coming to straight. Here you go. Good, Lisa. Then you're setting yourself up for the dumbbell sit ups. In this round, we only have 13. Glorious 13. Going in 15 seconds. Here comes the box. Oh. Nice work, you guys. Here we go, 10 more seconds of work. And then, ooh. Okay, and stop. <laughs> stop, 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 rest. Because then we're going into our up downs for nine. Nine up downs. In three, two, one. Here we go. We're not going forwards or backwards. And both weights are on the shoulders. Get that elbow straight. Here we go, Kristen. Nice, Hannah. Good, 80. Awesome job. 
job. Okay, get ready for a reverse. Or sorry, not reverse. I just really like to reverse sit-ups. Dumbbell sit-ups, 11 reps. So working our way down, going all together in five seconds. Three, two, one. 11 reps. Here it is. You should feel your feet relying on those dumbbells. They're there to help you. That should allow your torso to stay nice and straight and not curved. Hey, row, press. Everybody's favorite move. So we've got our row, press, and then seven final up downs. But then mentally prepare because we're not done after that. Okay, we got one more fun activity for you. And a good share of prompt. We are going to row press in 10 seconds. Going in three, two, one, here we go. Good, Melissa. This one is hard. But as I like to say, you're not here for easy. There we go, we're getting 10 more seconds. Try to get one more rep in. And rest, final 10 seconds. Then we're gonna do seven, up downs, seven up downs in three, two, one. Here it is. And we are resting. Once you're done. Nice job. All right, yeah, grab a little bit of water. Nice work, everyone. Okay, and then I'm going to um, take us through what our final, actually name this the final countdown. Um, so again, we've got three moves. Okay, this first one, or a heels up lunge, um, or it's semantics of names sometimes. Um, it's kind of more of a split squat, but whatever. So again, this is a, a playful movement, meaning it's gonna feel and look a little bit different for everybody. But I want you to get, so we're in this staggered stance here and have your feet be kind of wide so you're not on a tightrope. Get those heels up so you're on your toes. Now in this position, I want you to lunge down as far as you can with comfort. So you shouldn't feel any pain and your heels are up and you're coming back down. We're staying on, the toes the whole time, three reps. Okay, and then you'll switch, three reps. So those are heels up for lunge. Then we're going into an overhead reverse lunge. Ooh, weight is up in the air. And then stepping back into a reverse lunge, coming back to straight. Um, don't overthink which leg you're stepping back on on which side you have the weight on, just do whatever feels comfortable for you. Three per side, three on one side, then switch the weight that the hand is in, three on the other. Then we go into bridge dumbbell pullovers. So we're on our back, knees are bent, feet are flat. 
Um, weight is up in the air, and then from this position, pick your hips up, tuck the chin, and you're lowering the weight. If you can get it to the floor, that's great. If not, that's great. But bring the weight back to straight up over your eyes. Okay, and then lowering down and back up, keeping those hips up the whole time. Eight reps. And then we go into big single leg lateral hops, six on each leg. Okay, so skaters, we go from one leg to the other. This, pick a leg, so this is my right. One, two, three. Okay, so six on one leg, six on the other. This is an AMRAP, which means you're doing as many rounds of those four movements as you can in seven minutes. Okay, if you are a tracking person and you want to keep track, please do it. If you are a I am here and now person and you don't feel like you need to keep track, don't worry about it. Okay, but we're moving for seven minutes continuously. Um, and we will start in 10 seconds. Yes. So heels up, forward lunge, three reps. Here we go. Get those heels up. Control the lowering. Good, Andy. This is an exercise in breathing, focus, balance, tracking. Knees over toes. Knees in line with toes. Good. Then we go into three overhead reverse lunges. Three per side. Then bridge dumbbell pullovers, eight reps. Remember, hips are up on this one, chin is tucked. Control that weight as it comes down. Oh, that's not gonna work. Go as slowly as you need to here. Pay attention to those shoulders. Don't drop the dumbbell on the head. Have a good grip on that weight. And breathe. And once you've done eight, you're moving into the big single leg lateral hops. Six per leg. Woo! Good. And then right back into heels up, forward lunge, three per side. Move at your own pace here. We are all our own beings, not comparing to anyone else, but to yourself. So you focus on you. And remember, this is week one. We have three more weeks after today to progress this. Control that weight as it comes down. Arms should be straight on this, and it should feel like a good stretch in the shoulders. Oh, 
breaths. Six big lateral hops. And we have under three minutes left. Nice, Meg. Here we go, Pierce. Good evening. Nice, Hannah. Here we go, you guys. Good, Melissa. Good, Andy. Good, Chasua. Okay, my friends, minute twenty left. Stay focused. Good <laughs> team of our share out, but. I gotta wait till this is over to talk about it. <laughs> okay, final minute. Here we go. Okay, Kristen. So keep yourself balanced. So think about what reps you have left because we have 15 seconds. And final five, four, three, Two, one. Nice job, you guys. Oh, hey. So if you are tracking how many rounds and reps you did, um, go ahead and write that down. And then final share out. Oh my God, let me catch my breath. <laughs> okay, so the question is, where is your focus? Yes, Meg, you can finish. Um, where is your focus? And I'm thinking about... It's not opportunity cost is the wrong word, but essentially the, the lost time and energy of every time your, your mind switches tasks. So for example, for me, it's like, I've gotten good at putting my phone away, but email, I'll have my email like minimized in the computer and I see the number of emails in there. And as soon as that number changes, I'm like, oh, what's going on? And then it takes me like five, 10 minutes to refocus on, on what I was doing. So what is it that you are focusing on today, this week. Um, and for me, it's, it's one thing and being really deliberate of like, okay, this is the task I'm doing and I'm not going to engage with anything else until that task is over. So what are you focusing on? Let's go Lisa, Hannah, Chesua, 80, then Melissa, Andy, Meg. Oh, Lisa has Lisa to go. Lisa doesn't want to go. I'll go. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but um, 
I'm focused on planning some vacations because it's been far too long since I've taken a real, real vacation that wasn't some sort of work travel. So um, while I am working during the day, I know that I'm doing that in order to allow myself to take some, some fun trips this year. Awesome. Oh, I'm so excited to hear where you go. All right, Chesua. Or I think I messed up our order, but we'll go Chesua next. Um. I'm getting in the grind, uh, back into the grind with work after the holidays. So I'm just trying to focus on uh, one task at a time versus getting overwhelmed because the list is long right now. So just trying to stay positive and one thing, get her done. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to Melissa, Andy, Megan, 80. Yeah. Hey, um, I think I gave myself a break to have my mind wander and sort of just take it more chill at the end of last year. So now I am actually, um, you know, that's not efficient, right? But it feels good to do that. Um, but yeah, I actually am more focused on like kind of completing concrete tasks one at a time, like Chesua in the work setting. Yeah, awesome. Andy. Um, I'm trying to block out like hour long chunks where I just fully dive into one thing and ignore everything else because same as you like when I see the email flash up I'm like "Ooh, what's that do I need to do something and no just leave it and see what see what I can get done focusing for an hour at a time oh I like that yeah hour long chunks all right my screen keeps changing I think we're going Meg and then 80 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've read the checklist manifesto, but it's uh, to reduce surgical errors, you make checklists. So I've been making checklists and it gives me great satisfaction to check something off when it's done. Isn't that amazing? It's like the most satisfying thing, like check that freaking box. Awesome, 80. I really love all of these things because um, staying focused is definitely a struggle for me. So uh, yesterday, first day back at work after a while and like just trying to stay focused on one task real hard yeah okay we're a one task wonders today <laughs> um thank you guys so much for joining me have a fantastic wednesday have a great weekend and i will see you back here on monday <laughs> bye